<clears throat> hey, 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 everybody. Hi, this is Lakita. And um, we, I just want to let you know, I speak life. This is our new um, evangelistic outreach uh, ministry tool. So if you're interested in learning about how to win the people in the marketplace um, as it pertains to uh, knowing and, and learning about God and Christ, um, then let us know. But we are excited. It is Mental Monday. And we are... Um, coming to you, um, this topic is a very interesting topic and we're only going to like hit it just a little bit. Um, we're going to kind of look at some points, if you will, um, about rescuing people. Is your rescuing people harming other people? Um, well, no, is it harming yourself? And, but tonight on the live radio show at 8 p.m., uh, and 11 p.m. for our Eastern time, we are going to be interviewing an emotions expert, Dr. Mary Lamia, who is a clinical psychologist licensed for 40 years. Um, she'll be on the live radio show tonight and we'll be interviewing her. She's wrote many different books about rescuing behavior and why we shouldn't be um, uh, rescuing other people and how do we, how do we help people without harming ourselves? And so I'll be interviewing her tonight on blog talk radio. So make sure you chime in. And so just for a few moments on our mental Monday for today, and so glad that you guys are chiming in. Thank you so much. Um, we have been researching and looking at ways to better help People, particularly my heart's desire is any people. I want to help any and all people that I can help. Um, but of course, I have a very, very soft spot for the people of God and um, and what it is that um, you say that you need help in and all of that. So today we're going to talk about why rescuing people is harming you. And it's really tricky because oftentimes if you're in the helping profession, like um, a teacher or um, a counselor, um, even like a correctional officer, um, the other portion is um, if you are in a, um, you're a pastor or something of that nature, um, rescuing people um, get sidetracked as a part of the caretaking that, that we do. But there is a harmful place inside of rescuing people. So we're going to talk about a little bit of the definitions of things to kind of help you. And I hope that even if it hits home with you, that you get that it hits home and to deal with some things. And so we're excited about that. Um, before we go into, we always have a question from last um, time. And the first question that we had from our last um, session um, about um, disappointment and all of that and hangups and hurts and things of that nature. Can you ever get rid of your hurts and hangups uh, that you've had since childhood? And the answer to that question, this is from last time. The answer to that question is yes, I do believe, but here's what I'm coming to find out. You and I are never going to change unless we first acknowledge that we need to change. The second portion is, is that we absolutely seek out the help that we need. So whether we run into someone we hear or even this Facebook or a professional or whatever it is that we know that in the core of us, it needs help and we run into the thing or the person or the book or whatever that's providing that help, then we need to stick to the plan to get the help that's necessary. Hurts, habits, and hangups are not going to go away on their own because they didn't come by themselves. They came with help from us, our environment, our living situation. So yes, you can get um, healed and delivered from um, things that you've grown up with, addictions, pornography, things of that nature. I believe in all of that in terms of a healing. I believe you can get a healing, but it requires the work. And most people don't want to do the work. So I hope that helps um, to answer your question. So getting into our mental money topic for today, why rescuing other people is very, very harmful. So let's talk about, just jump right into it. What are rescuing behaviors? People that have rescuing behaviors are typically people, first of all, you should know that the rescuing person has been doing the rescuing since they've been a child. So it is something they've become accustomed to and have become attached to. And they've learned to trust in the power of their ability to rescue someone. So there is almost like a junkie. It's almost like there's a high for them without even knowing that it's not something that they should be doing that leads to codependency. Uh, but as a child, they form this 
behavioral pattern of rescuing people, um, uh, more than one person. And then um, they began to live out that continual feeling of power uh, as they became an adult. So what are the rescuing behaviors? Typically people who are a rescuer are overly responsible. But watch this, because I don't want anybody to feel like, wait, you know, that's just, you should be responsible. Um, they have a high motivation for others, to helping others. And I, I can really speak to the rescuing person because early on, um, I had a rescuing uh, uh, attitude and spirit from probably around the age of um, 18 through 22. Um, or maybe a little bit young, 17 to 22, something of that nature. I was gun ho for God. I was zealous. I was into it. And I didn't realize that um, when you start to want to think the thoughts for people and to intervene when they've not asked you to intervene, you're probably rescuing them. And what happens is, and I'm going to talk about this later, but you'll always know if you're rescuing someone because they will never appreciate what you do. See, when you have gotten permission for some, from someone who's ready for the help, they will invite you in and they will let you know that they want you to stay there because they're going to appreciate what you're doing. Typically, those who rescue are uninvited. They go in at the premonition that they need to help because the person's life is out of control. Now, the fact that you have become overly responsible for someone else's emotion and have invited yourself in their life without permission, um, then what happens is after a time of being pushed aside of not being accepted, what you tend to take, what tends to happen is um, you tend to become exhausted. And the other portion about that is not just so exhausted, but you become worn out and you become defeated. So here's the plot about rescuing and the behavior that's attached to it. Um, you tend to be stuck in your own efforts of your own life. Um, and it's saying that my connection is weak. Okay, there we go. Um, you have an inability. Now watch this. If you're helping people, that's one thing. But if you have an inability to actually help yourself, then that's something different. Then we need to talk. Um, you're conscientious. So those who are a rescuer are very conscientious. Why? Because it's their nature to actually identify those that are around them that cannot, quote unquote, do for themselves better than what the rescuer feels like they should be doing. Now watch this. Why do we rescue people? We rescue people, like I said at the entry of our conversation today, because we've been doing this since childhood. Um, but here's the thing I want us to focus on, that our behavioral attachment um, has nothing to really do with the wanting to see that the person is better. Watch this. When we are rescuers, we're not really wanting them necessarily, consciously maybe, but necessarily wanting the person to be better. What we want to do is to ease the discomfort that we feel in the atmosphere when that person who is quote unquote inadequate or out of sorts are around you. So really it's not them that we're rescuing. We're rescuing us and our inability to deal with extra extraordinary outside influences of other people. So what happens is, let's say, for example, we're all in a group of people and I recognize that there's one person who does not know how to protect her own rights. People, um, uh, stump on her rights and, 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 and they, um, they have no boundaries with her. And so what you will do as a rescuer, you will attempt to go in and speak on her behalf and like a knight in shining armor. And that can happen for man or woman. You go in, you speak on their behalf and whoa, ho, you've rescued them. But the reality, it had nothing to do with them necessarily. Yes, you might be upset and angry, but watch this because the anger of where you have your anger towards tells a lot about what you're actually rescuing, um, whether you're rescuing yourself or you're rescuing the person. And so what happens is you go in, you rescue, and the person just looks at you and may not even thank you. They may not even thank you. They may not say anything to you. And then you're like, whoa, what's happening about here? And then what happens is over a period of time, if you or I, as we're rescuing people, do not um, really check our own behavior, we will become the victims and we'll need somebody to rescue us. So let's keep talking about why we rescue people. Um, we've lived 
in what's called by Dr. Matthews, a rescuer's identity. So this is where um, you and I, we, we, we got this feeling. And here's what's tricky with the people of God that's believers, because we have this Holy Spirit that we call a comforter. And so what happens is it, the comforter leads and guides us into all truth. But so what happens is people that are filled with the Holy Spirit oftentimes fit, say, I was led by God to go and do X and X and X. But I'm going to tell you something. When you're led by God, that's one thing. But being able to differentiate what you're led by and how you're led. And if it creates harm for the person, you ain't led by God. So if it creates harm for the person or if the person doesn't respond in the way in which you think, and now you're harmed by the person's non receipt of your quote unquote rescue, then it may not be from God either. When we look at situations, even in the scriptures where um, the people of God came in because they were led by God to speak, to say or whatever, there was always a benefit for uh, the person. And while the truth does hurt at times, the Bible says it will make us free in John 8 and 32. So to rescue someone is one thing, but um, I mean, to, to be led by the Holy Spirit is one thing, but to rescue someone out of your own discomfort of how things feel in the moment, because you happen to be in their presence is something totally different. Um, and I'm just keeping with my time. Um, cause we are getting busy cause we're getting ready for our TV show. I just want y'all to know that. So, um, I'm having to really watch my time, um, and get really disciplined about a lot of things. We have the radio show tonight at 8 PM. You want to be on the show, Dr. Mary Lemieux, which is a clinical psychologist. I'll be interviewing her. She's an ex, um, she is an international national, um, expert, um, emotions expert. So join the blog talk at 8 PM tonight. Here's another thing. Um, most rescuers, and this is critical, most of us rescuers, we were given power to rescue people at an early age by our family members. So um, if we had an, an, an addict in our family, then we probably might have picked up not just a codependency spirit, but also the ability and the power and desirability to want to rescue because we feel like... Um, you need rescuing. So we've seen what drugs may have done for, for somebody in our life. And so then what happens is we rescue. Um, I remember many times me rescuing people and then they would turn me away when I was just when I was younger. And I didn't understand. So I thought it was just the devil. I thought that was just like, you don't want no help. You don't want no this. And then I learned about myself. And this is even true for me today. I will help anybody in the world. I'm a mentor to a lot of people. And I'm so very grateful. And I count it very much an honor. Um, but I've come to figure out in the last maybe 20 years of my life that I am not going to help anybody that's unwilling to help themselves. I am pretty, I'm nice, but I'm pretty hard. And so I will move on. And so if my moving on looks like I don't want to help you, then so be it. I have to monitor my energy because my wealth is my energy. My energy is my wealth and my energy comes from the Lord. I was endowed by God to inspire and to motivate and to train and to teach and transfer information to people. And I've known that since I've been three years old. And so I've had to learn though at the age of 20, how not to become a, a rescuer. I think that's probably why I stopped rescuing people and people pleasing and things of that nature. And then calling it helps and calling it the giftings of God and things of that nature. And it's not the giftings of God. It's not the Holy Spirit leading you to do that because the Holy Spirit is never going to have you do something that's going to deplete you from the very thing that he's trying to fill you to. God's not going to allow you to be depleted with the thing he just filled you with. Now, we are called to be caretakers as it pertains to things in the spirit, and uh, but not to exert so much that we lose completely ourselves and become a victim within ourselves. All right. I hope that it helps. Um, so. Um, now Dr. Mary has a book and I'll be interviewing her tonight. And one of the things about her book was why you need to rescue yourself from rescuing others. That's her book. That's one of many books. I'm so excited about, I'm interviewing her tonight. Um, she says that the rescuer, watch this, in initial stages of a relationship. Now this is critical. Um, they seem gracious and happily altruistic, but as time goes by, he feels increasingly unhappy, despondent, disappointed, critical, and powerless. So um, let's use the man, for example. So when a man comes in to rescue a woman in a relationship, even if she, and rescuing doesn't mean she doesn't have anything. It just simply means that, um, that there's some defense.
Okay, it says that we're back. Um, so we rescue people, and I'm always conscientious about this whole topic as it pertains to um, our pastors and our leaders. Um, you know, we rescue, and then we say it's the Holy Spirit. We give, and then we're about ready to walk away from God. And here's the reason why. It's because we rescued them rather than actually help them. To help me means that you actually give me tools, tips, strategies, and you give me the initiative to do the things that you've given me um, to do. Rescue means I come in, I think for you, I control you, even though you don't know that you're being controlled. And then what I do is I go from rescuing you and giving you a life jacket, then to creating a club. Now watch this. I go from giving you a life jacket to creating a club. And then the club, I set rules and become the persecutor. And in the club, as I set rules, the, per the persecutor, I begin to monitor everything that you're doing, everything that you're saying. And therefore, I no longer become the rescuer. I become the persecutor. I created all these things and all these ways that you can move and now I've called you and I've told you don't you do this, don't you do X, Y, and Z. So no, I'm no longer a rescuer, I'm a persecutor and many people have moved from helping people to rescuing them to becoming a persecutor and I don't have a whole lot of time but tonight on the 8 o'clock radio show you're going to hear some more about persecuting and rescuing and helping because you got to know the difference. This is why people are frustrated in your presence. So let me help you with some Something. I get it. And I've known this since I've been about 16 years old. Well, when God told me and then I had the courage enough to tell uh, my first one of my first leaders, um, I, ch I shared with him um, a bishop um, years ago, more than 20 years ago, that I was called to um, be a counsel um, to those that are spiritual leaders. And um, God gave me that when I was 15 and a half years old. And of course, you're not going to go around saying nothing like that because I read the story of Joseph. So I'm like, child, please, we ain't talking about that. But what started to happen was. God started to set me up to doing that as a teenager. They would be in conversation, great men of God, great women of God, and never had any indiscretion on my end. God just put that in my spirit. But because for the first four years, I didn't know really, I was still learning my gift and all of that kind of stuff. I would rescue. So and because I'm a seer, I could see things before it happened. So what would I do? I would jump in and say, ooh, don't do this, da, 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 da. And I would speak what God showed me. And of course, it was the truth. It's like a um, a timeline, a time warp or uh, 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 going back in time. It would be true, but it would mess up what God was trying to do because I spoke too soon. And this is what rescuers do too. They speak too soon and out of turn. So if you're being led by the Holy Spirit, you're not going to speak out of turn. It's going to always be in sync. You're going to always know what it is that you're supposed to do. And so uh, that's the difference when you look at rescuer versus being led by the Holy Spirit. A rescuer is going to always do something out of time and out of turn um, and then get pissed off because the people aren't receptive or um, excited about the help. But one of, first of all, they didn't ask for no help. Because until a person actually acknowledges that they need help, they'll never change anyway. And this is what I want my pastor uh, friends to know. That you're called to preach this living gospel. And to preach the gospel of truth. And not to talk about anything other than the truth of the gospel. God will give you insight and revelation about other things, but we got to stick with the main thing, with the main thing, or else we will move into um, rescuing people and then being a persecutor. And then there's many other things that we're going to talk about tonight on the radio show that you will become. And you know, at the end result, my pastor friends, that you will become, if you don't stay in the line of what God's called you to stay in, um, you then will become the victim. And then you'll be pissed off because there'll be no one to come rescue you because people are not even going to notice that you need to be rescued. Why? Because you have the behavioral affect, A-F-F-E-C-T, of being a leader and helping people, but they don't know that you've been rescuing them. And now that you're depleted, exhausted, crazed out of your mind, feeling used and abused, they don't know now you become the victim that needs to be rescued. So in um, summing it all up, um, and I'll get a chance to answer all your questions probably afterwards. Um, I want to just encourage you, jump on the live radio show. Um, soon it is my prayer and desire, so we will be doing um, some actual live um, TV show things coming up um, in the next, um, I think it's 
35 days so please watch for it it's going to be free taping and we'd love everybody to join us we're just trying to move forward in the things of God so um and to help people um but here's what I want to say as we close out for today um rescuing people is harmful when you haven't decided that you yourself needed to be rescued first um no one's coming to save us but God um, God will send people to help us, um, but the helping that he sends should never deplete the person coming to help so much that they lose their way. Anytime you start off helping people and you lose your way, I want you to always remember this from the people's therapist, that you are no longer helping them. You are trying to rescue them. Because something in you thinks they don't have what they need. And this is where the spirit part comes in, I believe, is that we've got to learn how to differentiate when to help and when to speak and when to say. Real people, when they want change, and I've been in personal empowerment, and I am a guru, and I'm going to say that for myself because I know I've helped tens of thousands of people. Um, and I say that very humbly, but I paid a heavy price for helping people because I love to help people. But I've, I've learned that I didn't always help. I was trying to rescue to the fault of losing a job um, because I wanted to, I started off helping 42 people get a job from one of my, the churches that I, I attended. I got 42 people a job when they were no job. And then my helping turned into rescuing. And let me tell you what was the key point. It's because I listened to someone else and I had no business listening to. And my help went to rescuing and I lost. I lost the ability to maintain that level of influence at that particular time with those 42 people. They remained uh, intact until the end of the contract. But then I had to lose something far more greater because I went from helping to rescuing. All because I did not pay attention to what was in front of me. So you will lose a lot um, when you stop helping people and get into rescuing. And you will always know the difference because you yourself will be depleted. So tonight, join us at 8 p.m. on the Blog Talk Radio, live radio show. Um, and check us out, Dr. Mary Lamia. She's an emotions expert. She's a clinical psychologist. 40 years she writes for psychology today. She has several books out there, and we're excited to be able to have her. And I want to thank you guys so much for joining. It gives me great encouragement for you guys to join on the calls. I'm trying to create these episodes so that we can move from here to actually being on TV, and we will be on TV very soon and shortly. And who who knows, some of you might be um, some of my guests um, on my show, but we are prepping for that next level and that next jump because I do believe this information is powerful and needful right, right now. So I love you guys so much. Make sure you tag a friend, let them know Mental Mondays is going on, and I pray that it's been a blessing to you. I will answer your questions when we're offline, but I love you so much. 8 p.m. tonight on the Lakita Long Show for our Mental Mondays on Blog Talk Radio. Mwah! Love you very much. Bye-bye. Me and these iPhones, I'm telling you. I think it's the glass. Well, here we go. So let me go ahead and answer a few questions then. Um, hey, Donald, I'll go ahead and answer a few things. Hey, Donald, um, so good to hear from you. Thank you so much, brother. Um, Amalia Gambles, I love you dearly. You already know that. Uh, one of my mentees, I love you. Um, we are ready. Yes. Um, excellent. Thank you. So I love you, Deanna. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Been praying for you. Pneumonia, get off of my sister. Yes, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Freddie Johns, I love you, love you, love you. Blessings to you, um, DC. Yes, um, I love you guys so much. If you have any current questions while I'm trying to attempt to turn this off, I think I need a new screen. Uh, let me know. 
But if, let me just ask this question. If I did a live taping locally uh, for TV, will you guys come and be a part of my audience? I just want to know for Mental Mondays. Would you guys come and be a part of my audience? Just answer yes, if you will. I would love, oh, and if you didn't see my shirt, I Speak Life is uh, Wake's uh, evangelistic outreach ministry that will be headed up by our own Amalia Gambles. And um, it's an awesome way to minister to people in 45 seconds. And we have uh, wristbands as well. It's just time to get in part the marketplace and, and really help people. But um, if you have any questions, let me know. And then we'll go from there. No questions? All right. So I've got to figure out how to turn this off. Love you.